What is it with these horror franchises where you get one horror film that's serious, you get the next one, goes goofy? What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another review. Today we are reviewing Cabin Fever 2 Spring Fever. Now I've done a full review on the first Cabin Fever a few days ago so if you haven't seen that one go and check that review out and then come back here and check out this film. Now I stated in my review for the first film that I do like the concept of having a slasher film with a villain that is a flesh-eating disease, as it, it is something a little bit different from the typical formula, and it just breaks new ground, and you can <clears throat> do something interesting with that concept. Now, there were things I liked about that film, things I didn't. Overall, that was a film that I that I could enjoy every now and then, just watching from the streaming services. This film, <laughs> this film's totally different. So if you want a pretext of what it's like between the differences between Cabin Fever and Cabin Fever 2 Spring Fever, look at the difference between the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. That is the sort of tonal shift you get in Cabin Fever 2 Spring Fever. This film is all goofy. Now I stated in my review for the first one that one of the things I didn't like about that first film was that deputy and how he had a very goofy nature to him. And that was not something that I particularly enjoyed. He was good for what they went for, but it's not something that particularly hit well with me. Well, this film, everything's goofy. Not just the deputy, everything. It's completely a horror comedy. And you can tell that before you even get into the film, because the opening credits to this film are done in like a Saturday morning cartoon style. So you know right off the bat what sort of film you're getting into. You know straight away that uh, this film's not going to be serious, is it? Fuck! Now, I'm not a hater of horror comedies. There are a few horror comedies I like. Tucker, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, Zombieland. They're very good films. The thing is... I like horror comedies when they start off as a horror comedy. Not when you get franchises like this where you get the first film that for the most part is pretty straight, has a few little comedy pieces thrown in there, but then you go to the sequel that just goes, yep, we're not doing anything fucking scary, we're just going on full comedy. No, I don't like it, and you should stop fucking doing it. Now... There is one thing that I do like about this film, and that's the concept of, you know, doing the typical thing with a sequel of, right, so we set this up in the, in the first one, now we gotta go a little bit bigger scale. So they take it out of the woods, away from the cabin, and go into a high school setting where there is now a lot more people that can be exposed to this flesh eating disease. That is a concept I did like, making it bigger, making it better. The only problem is I really enjoyed that setting of the first film where it's in the cabin in the woods because it gives a little more isolated feel like they are there with this disease and they got nowhere to run. And for the most part, the effects still hold up pretty decent compared to the first one as well. But that's about all that I really enjoy about this film. Everything else just gets on my nerves. Not a fan of the acting. I don't particularly care for the characters. You don't really care if they live or if they die. You get this whole thing where the whole school gets surrounded by like this uh, military group or whatever the hell they are. They close off the school, they barricade the exits, and they shoot anyone that they see because they've got the disease. You know, that's an interesting little thing to put into the film because now they don't just have the disease to worry about, now they've got these other people to worry about. So they're really trying to survive, in a, in a sense, two villains in their eyes. Only thing is, it comes out of nowhere, and you don't really get much of an explanation of who the fuck these people are. So it's like, okay, so they're just running around with guns shooting everybody. There's a flesh-eating disease going on in there that's wiping out everyone. Because the thing is with this film is that 
it's set in like this prom setting. And so you got all these school kids that are there that are con- contracting this disease. And like the first film, I don't think anybody actually dies from the disease itself. Most people in this film get shot. So the acting is not very good. The characters aren't interesting at all. I'm not a stop fan of the way this film was directed. It's certainly got nothing compared to that first film, which did have good act, good directing, which I will give it. This film, not as much. Like It's not horrible directing, but it's not as good as that in that first film. To me, the, this film doesn't look as good. It's nowhere near as creepy. The soundtrack isn't as scary, again, because it's going that whole horror, horror comedy route. It's not something that's going to really creep you out. You're just going to look at it and go, ah, yeah, about mid-brain, if that, <coughs> if I can be generous. And like I said, the whole thing with the opening credits and the ending credits, done in a cartoon style, which mainly lets you know, again, which film you're coming into. It's something that bothers the hell out of me. It's like, okay, I know that you're a horror film that's trying to do some comedy. You're going into that horror comedy route. But can't you at least let your your opening be a little bit more serious? I don't know. It's probably just a me thing, all right? Probably does. I don't know if it bothers anybody else. It's just something that bothers me because I'm a little picky. And when you go into a film like this where you got, again, a serious film and then not so serious film and you have an intro like that uh, this is not interesting at all again this is a film again it's not a terrible film it's nowhere near one of the worst films i've ever seen it is still a decent film but it's definitely not one of the horror comedies that i will grab before any others it's not a horror it's not one of them cases where i'm going to think you know i'm in mood for a horror comedy i'm going to grab cabin fever 2 spring fever no, I'd much rather grab either Zombieland or Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, or even to a degree Evil Dead 2. Is that, uh, that's a lot more successful at going that horror comedy route. This, not so much. It just, look, it does work if this is the sort of thing that you like, but it just doesn't work for me. This is a film that I will never rewatch. I'm never going to go out and buy it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to look it up again on a streaming service to watch it again. This film is just one of those films that is just a one and done. I've seen it. Right. I've experienced that. I don't need to see it again. Whereas I can go back and watch the original in probably four years' time and have another a little bit of decent fun with it. I can't do that with this one because I, don't, I just don't care about anything that's in it. Now... If you're a fan of this film and you do like it, I'm sorry, but I'm here to give my thoughts and um, I'm just being honest. This is not a film that I enjoy at all. So, yeah, I got nothing else to say. Just <laughs> So if you are someone who enjoyed or even loved that first film, then you really got to go in with some tempered expectations with this one. Expect the fact that this one is not going to be anywhere near as good as the first one. It ain't going to have any scares in it at all. So it's going to be nowhere near as scary as the first film. This is one that just, it's stupid fun, tries to have a bit of fun, tries to do some comedy that doesn't really land. You may enjoy this one, but if you're like me, then you're not going to enjoy it. So overall, I would recommend you just pass this one on and don't even worry about it. Just stick with that first film. That's all you really need to experience from this franchise. So there you are, everybody. That is my review for Cabin Fever 2 Spring Fever. I'm sorry this film is a little bit delayed. I've had to try and crawl to find a bit of time to be able to film and review this. Um, but I've got it out for you now. Is this a film that you enjoyed? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments section below, whether this is a film that you enjoyed or you didn't. Let me know down below, so that way we can have a little talk. Also, guys, don't forget to like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified when I drop more great horror reviews.